Welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez, and this is from the South. We begin in Belize. The country has become the last one in Central America to confirm a case of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health said that a 38-year-old Belizean national had arrived in the country last Thursday and sought medical attention after traveling to Los Angeles and transiting through Texas. The Dominican Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has announced measures to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 amid a positive confirmation on the, of the virus on the island. In the case of Dominica, it is a 54-year-old Dominican citizen who recently returned from the United Kingdom. As there were no known previous cases on Dominica, it must be assumed that he would have contracted the virus abroad. Therefore, if we were to rely on the global scientific formula of calculation and measurement, this would now place Dominica on level two, as there is now a known presence of the virus on island. We shall intensify screening at our borders, and I anticipate that in a day or two, we shall be announcing new measures and regulations with respect to, to the opening of our ports of entry. Suffice to say, Dominica shall follow international practice and guidelines in this regard. We are a small nation, and with the positive testing, it will take a few days for persons abroad wanting to return home, and for visitors wanting to return to their homes to formalize such travel. Also, I anticipate that we will need to stock up on vital supplies, especially medical and health-related cargo. In Trinidad and Tobago, Prime Minister Keith Rowley said he expects COVID-19 cases to increase, but gave assurance that the health care givers will respond effectively as the confirmed cases in the country rise to 50. Health infrastructure and our health caregivers would be able to respond. This planning, this expectation could be thrown off, be undermined, become insufficient if something happens that ought not to happen. What is that something? That something is if the population behaves irresponsibly. I can say that so far, the vast majority of people are behaving responsibly, so our chances are reasonably good. But we expect, and it is, it is happening as we expect, that there are some people in our society, and some who are outside of our society at this time, who may do things which could have the effect of allowing our infection to increase beyond our expectation. And the government of St. Lucia has announced the closure of the country's airports to all incoming commercial and private flights effective at midnight. All ports will also be closed until April 5th. Aircrafts facilitating the departure of passengers repatriating from St. Lucia will be permitted as well as air cargo. Cuba confirmed five new cases on Sunday for a total of 40 in the country. Of the patients diagnosed with the disease, 35 have a stable condition and three cases remain serious. Three are Cubans, one is French, and the other one is Russian. To other news, Venezuela's foreign minister held a meeting with representatives of the United Nations. The parties worked towards refining the details of the special cooperation, uh, which is aimed at fighting COVID-19. President Nicolás Maduro has called for an immediate lifting of U.S. sanctions as the country moves to strengthen its health care system. Venezuela. And Venezuela is taking measures to repatriate nationals upon the request of President Nicolás Maduro. The foreign ministry has requested that U.S. authorities allow a special Conviasa airline flight to travel between the United States and Venezuela in order to bring citizens home particularly for those in a situation of distress due to the COVID-19. 
Venezuela's National Bolivarian Armed Forces are working hard to ensure that despite the U.S. blockade and the measures taken to confront the coronavirus, food can reach communities. The blockade is a crime. It's a crime against humanity. The United States attempts to continue blocking their accounts. They are going after our food, our medicine. Here is the Bolivarian Revolution for supply and production, an instrument to protect the people. Yesterday, the president spoke about our measures. We need to give them our attention, a lot of attention, but there will always be the protection of the people. And this is one way to do it. We are doing this in coordination with the Minister of Alimentation as part of the great mission for sovereign provision of food. Here is the commander of the Zod for the capital. And these clay boxes are going here to be given to 100 families in the community of El Valle. This is the solidarity of the armed forces, all in civic military alliance solidarity and more solidarity. United, we will win. Presidential candidates in Bolivia have agreed to postpone the electoral calendar and will be setting a new date for the uh, presidential elections. Fede Morales has the details. The president of the Supreme Electoral Court, Salvador Romero, has said that the campaign managers and candidates of the eight parties and coalitions who are participating in the May 3rd elections have approved the suspension of the electoral calendar for the duration of the total quarantine, which will last 14 days. He also said that they will maintain contact with the political leaders in order to set a new date for the national elections. Meanwhile, the president of the lower house, Sergio Choque, said that the Legislative Assembly will approve the corresponding law to modify the date of the elections once the Supreme Electoral Court and the eight candidates come to an agreement. That was Freddy Morales from Bolivia. Colombia declared a prison emergency after protests began in 13 prisons across the country. Protests by inmates in several prisons, including La Modelo in Bogotá, left 23 people dead and 82 wounded. Prisoners were demanding sanitary controls and preventive measures against the coronavirus. So let's take a look at the situation inside Colombian prisons. On the night of Saturday, March 21st, inmates in La Modelo Prison in Bogotá protested against the new sanitary protection measures to control the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> a situation made worse due to overcrowding and precarity of their condition. When the guards entered to do a head count, they didn't have masks on, and there is a virus in the streets. Everyone is under quarantine. People are not supposed to enter the courtyards if they don't follow strict measures to prevent the virus. We heard the pots banging at 9 p.m., and then people lost control. They started breaking the fences and trying to escape. Then the guards came in shooting, and I saw two of my friends die. Relatives of the inmates gathered outside the jail since early in the morning on Sunday to receive information about those who were wounded during the protests. A lot of people here have brothers there. My own brother is inside. We want answers. We want to know if they are fine, what happened inside. They won't tell us anything. They throw tear gas at us. They mistreat us. Our relatives are still inside. My brother is John Ortiz. He was wounded last night inside the prison. They shot him twice, and they won't give us any information. Relatives demand answers for the dead and the injured. Pedro Martinez has a son in the model prison, and he doesn't want to see history repeat itself. Another of his children died inside the prison of Beliconia in Florencia, Caquetá, due to burns that were not treated on time. The pain I have is that they didn't help you. The director of the prison did nothing and lied to us. He didn't help my son. I want to see him. I'm the father of Victor Manuel. We all are in shock over your lack of action. You let him die in pain, 72 hours lying on the floor like a dog. Protests were held in several prisons across the country. According to Justice Minister Margarita Cabello, it was a prison break attempt. All of this comes as the country is dealing with a crisis over the coronavirus pandemic, where several sectors have strongly criticized the government's slow response. We'll take a short break now, but don't go away.
water. Boil. Mizu. Zero. Lo. Bassa. Acqua. Acqua. Agua. A review of the world news that investigates, incites analysis and induces criticism, because every event has a context. Pusimos el punto negro. Dot in the eye. Saturdays. Only on the African countries continue to take measures against the spread of the COVID-19 as the virus grows at a steady pace across the continent. Several African nations have introduced restrictions and campaigns in their efforts to contain the virus. According to the World Health Organization, there are over 1,400 confirmed cases in 42 African countries. Among these, at least 40 people have died. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has announced a three-week national lockdown to contain the spread, which has affected more than 400 people. The National Coronavirus Command Council has decided to enforce a nationwide lockdown for 21 days with effect from midnight on Thursday, the 26th of March. As of Monday, 36 cases have been confirmed in Nigeria including one death. The most populated country in Africa tightened restrictions over the weekend in three states, on places of worship, airports, and bars, to try and protect its population against the coronavirus. More measures may be instituted by the federal and state governments in the coming days as the situation will demand. Very importantly, I urge all Nigerian residents to take safe isolation and social distancing very seriously in order to prevent the spread of this disease in our country. Zimbabwe has announced the death of one coronavirus case. The victim was a 30-year-old journalist who had visited the United States recently and tested positive upon his return. He was the second person to test positive in Zimbabwe and was quarantined at a local hospital. Wilkins Isolation Center reported a death of one of our COVID-19 cases. And I wish to advise our nation not to panic because of this death, as COVID-19 is treatable if someone has all the precautionary measures in place. Medical supplies donated to Africa by a Chinese organization have arrived in Ethiopia. The supplies donated by the Jack Ma Foundation include masks, testing kits, and protective suits. The medical equipment will be distributed through Ethiopian Airlines to the 54 African countries, starting with the most affected ones. And the Senegalese president, Macky Sall, has also declared a nationwide state of emergency over the COVID-19. The West African country has closed its border with Gambia, as a measure to prevent the virus from spreading between the countries. In accordance with Article 69 of the Constitution and Law 69 to 29 of 29 April 1969, as of midnight, I'm declaring a state of emergence throughout the national territory. The government, the administrative authorities, and all the state services concerned will take all necessary steps to implement the decree on the state of emergence without any delay. And the World Health Organization expressed concern at the rate at which the COVID-19 is spreading and claiming lives globally. More than 300,000 cases of COVID-19 have now been reported to WHO from almost every country 
in the world. That's heartbreaking. The pandemic is accelerating. The fury of the virus illustrates the folly of war. That is why today I am calling for an immediate global ceasefire in all corners of the world. It is time to put armed conflict on lockdown and focus together on the true fight of our lives. To warring parties, I say, pull back from hostilities, put aside mistrust and animosity, silence the guns, stop the artillery, end the airstrikes. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has imposed new restrictions to try and curb further spread of the coronavirus. British citizens have been instructed to strictly stay at home, only allowed to go out in small numbers for necessary purposes. He has also ordered all non-essential shops to close. Johnson warned that the measures put in place are going to be enforced by the police. Citizens have continued living their normal lives and go about business as usual since the outbreak of the COVID-19. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them, including through fines and dispersing gatherings. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship, will stop all gatherings of more than two people in public, excluding people you live with, and will stop all social events, including weddings, baptisms and other ceremonies, but excluding funerals. Parks will remain open for exercise, but gatherings will be dispersed. More on this from Owen Connor Doherty in Leeds. Amid criticism of the lack of a coherent response to the COVID-19 crisis, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced a national lockdown. This means that people in the United Kingdom are not allowed to leave their homes. Now, there are a number of exceptions to this. People are still allowed out to do their shopping, to buy basic supplies, food and medicine. People are still allowed out to go exercise once a day. And people are allowed to travel to and from work, providing that that work can't be done remotely. Now, the Prime Minister said that the police will be given powers to enforce these measures. His message remains a little unclear because while he mentioned fines, he didn't go into any greater detail. And while these measures will be welcomed, many will criticise as to why they've come so late. Owen Connor from the UK. We have more stories coming up, so join us again in just a minute. Innovation, science, the technological breakthrough and its influence in society. Viajeros del saber, el futuro está aquí. Atomic. Monday, only on Telesur. again. And we continue with the coronavirus. Now our correspondent in Washington, Jorge Gistoso, has an update on the situation in the United States. Thank you. The coronavirus cases continue to grow. It surpassed the 40,000 confirmed cases mark and close to 500 deaths. 
mostly confirmed in three states. We're talking about the New York State, California, and also the Washington State, but most of the cases are in New York City and New York State. The National Guard has been deployed in those three states in order to help the governors uh, to cope with this absolutely crisis. The governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, says that uh, the situation is really grave in two to three weeks. The hospitals could be absolutely overwhelmed. The Jacob Javits Center has been transformed in a hospital. We're talking about a thousand more beds completely equipped to deal with coronavirus cases. We're talking that here at Washington, the Congress is still debating, especially the Senate, a stimulus plan in order to uh, make the economy to run. And there's big disagreements while uh, the position of the Republicans are mostly to favor big corporations. Democrats are really screaming and not, a, not, not really ready to, to sign on a bill that they want, especially small business, small services, and especially regular people to be the first beneficiary of uh, this similar package that could be eventually of two trillion dollars. They hopefully believe that they could sign, reach an agreement before the end of the day, while in the meantime, the situation is getting worse because still medical equipment is not sufficient and the test kits are not enough. So now we're seeing lines in front of the hospitals in New York and in other parts of the country waiting in line to be tested. So we have that 40,000 cases confirmed, but given the fact that people still cannot be tested, we don't know exactly how long and how much this uh, epidemic could last. We get back to you now. That was Jorge Estoso from Washington. In other news, health experts in Chile are left perplexed. The government of Sebastián Piñera declared a state of catastrophe on March 18th, removed the military from its barracks, but refuses to implement a nationwide lockdown to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus. The country now has more than 746 cases. Autumn will soon arrive in Chile as the novel coronavirus continues to rage in the country. It claimed its first victim on March 21st, an 83-year-old woman. Yet President Piñera's administration hasn't announced a national quarantine, despite growing pressure from health experts, mayors, and opposition leaders. Some are motivated by populist zeal, others by electoral zeal, but without doubt, this is a complete senselessness, and this measure that some people are proposing is a measure that will cause, without a doubt, a lot of damage, a lot of looting, a lot of crime. But what if the virus mutates and it will only cause symptoms, like of a common cold? I have declared a state of constitutional exception, simply known as a state of catastrophe. President Piñera declared a state of catastrophe on March the 18th. But what was the government's priority on the same day? Erasing the slogans of Chile's mass anti-government protests in Santiago's Plaza Dignidad, the most iconic square of the last five months of protest. Despite the coronavirus crisis, a few protesters on March 20th tried to keep the movement alive, but security forces quickly dispersed them. Meanwhile, hospitals lack basic supplies as the number of COVID-19 cases continues to soar. One of the pillars of containing the pandemic is strategic communication, communication the risk and also regaining the trust of citizens. We have offered the government all of our expertise to explain the measures and the stages. The situation requires a lot of order, a lot of discipline, and because of this, we have met with political parties and social movements to show them that this crisis requires complex measures, such as social distancing, the total closure of the metropolitan region, with maintaining only the basic services. We are sure that all citizens will understand, since this will give us more time to strengthen our diagnostic capacity. Residents of coastal cities now reject travelers from Santiago, and not without reason. More than 60 percent of the over 600 confirmed cases in Chile come from the capital. Due to the government's refusal to declare a national quarantine, I have decided to close our community. 
President Sebastián Piñera, because you haven't addressed the request of more than 200 mayors to declare a national quarantine, we have joined the mayors of Santo Domingo, San Antonio, Cartagena, Algarrobo, and El Kiosco and decided to close our communities. What we are doing is demanding that the government install the sanitary barriers here in the entrance of the province of Los Andes and also for the province of San Felipe. Meanwhile, the mayor of Recoleta went all the way to Santiago to carry out his own plan, ordering a shipment of Cuba's interferon alpha 2B medication that has proven effective against some COVID-19 cases. Interferon alpha 2B has been used on numerous occasions for virus that didn't have any treatment because they were new viruses. And in all of those cases, this product has helped to improve the health of the patients who were in most serious conditions, whose life was at risk. And therefore, I believe that this can serve as a tremendous lesson for the world. Cuba is a biotech power and we knew that a long time ago. But there are people who overvalue neoliberalism and don't want to open themselves to the idea that the alternative can be a source of wealth. China has deployed the military to disinfect the Wuhan rail station, and Venezuelan authorities used trucks to disinfect the streets. In Chile, the police fired tear gas at people who throw stones back at them in response. We've come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find all of our stories on our website, telesurenglish.net. And join us also on social media for Telesur English. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Thank you for watching. A review of the world news that investigates, incites analysis, and induces criticism. Because every event has a context. Pusimos el punto de Dot in the eye. Saturdays, only on Telesur. Una travesía para descubrirnos. Buscamos conexiones perdidas. No nos queda otra que luchar, porque no tenemos nada que perder. Realmente es por todos. Recorremos el mundo con... Reportajes Telesur The life is full of moments Moments of fight Moments of hope Moments that transcend Moments that you can live in Telesur Documentaries Sundays Only on Telesur Innovation, science, the technological breakthrough and its influence in society. Viajeros del saber, el futuro está aquí. Atomy. Monday, only on the